Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes This is Let Me Boy You To Sleep Ooh, sleep <sighs> Just giving Vinny a little bone So he's, <laughs> sounds weird doesn't it just giving him a nice bone. So he's happy. He's on. All right. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. What are you doing? Don't go stare at me. Don't stare at me. Hopefully he'll behave himself. Generally, if I give him a bone, that kind of distracts. Kind of distracts him. From anything else. But we'll see. Oh. oh I could really do with. Go to sleep. I was almost laying down. Oh, this chair goes a little bit too far back, so it's uh, it's all right. It's okay. Vinny. So what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I have decided. So anyone listen to this that are not part of my Facebook group, then. It's worth joining because from now on, my Q&A Friday podcasts will only be available on the to, to group members. And the Facebook group is Jason Newland's Facebook group. Uh, there is a link on my website. Um, but if you just look for Jason Newland's did I say Facebook group? Jason Newland's boring group. Oh, I can't even. Don't even know the name of my own group. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is setting the the podcast episodes. Oh gosh. Uh, from this Friday onwards, for the Q and A Friday, they will be set to private, and only people, members of the Facebook group, the private Facebook group will be allowed, or will, be, will have access, be allowed, that sounds a bit stirred doesn't it, you're not allowed, it's free to join, there's no cost other than the two seconds it takes to just press the button to join, and then, yeah, so I'll have the private, the links will be put onto the the Facebook group on a Friday to all four recordings and I will also have downloads available on my website as well and I'll post those links as well so that would be uh, all, all good and I've, yeah that's it I mean it's it's a trial it's a trial I mean I hope you know I plan to continue this and only have make it available on the Facebook group because it just it kind of makes sense to do something to have something that you can only have access to you know I've, I'm going to rearrange myself just my body not oh I have that out there. anyway so I Oh, why is it? There's no noise in the garden. And suddenly, as soon as I start recording, I sound drunk, don't I? As soon as I start recording, there's nothing but noise. <sighs> so I've had a couple of uh, comments asking me, or messages, or whatever, asking me when I'm going to do the podcast episode about my stepmom number two. Because I did step num step mum number one, and I did say I was going to do a second one. Well, it's not going to be today, because today I'm going to talk about my step mum's birthday party. So I will be talking about and she will be involved in this podcast. Well, she won't be involved in it. She's not here, but I'll tell you what happened. So. Is there anything else I need to tell you? I do have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to that, please. Just or just search for my name, Jason Newland, and 
and it's my birthday on the 26th of August so not today but in exactly a week's time so it's the 19th of August today in seven days time next Monday the 26th I will be da, 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 54 all right Vinny calm down I've got my little zipper here my little beeper I don't want to have to use it it's not a zipper it's not a zapper just uh, makes a noise but he doesn't like the noise he was so naughty earlier so I let him off the lead so he could play with a dog the dog had a ball the dog left the ball to come over to me he grabbed Vinny grabbed the ball and ran off he would not give the ball back now the owners of the other dog said he does get a little bit um he might try yeah he gets a bit tetchy he might try and he might tell Vinny off if Vinny doesn't give him the ball back so I thought I'll, I'll get the ball off him don't worry he would not let me near him it's he'd lay down on his stomach and just look at me and as soon as my arm my hand was probably I don't know a foot away it'd run off and he was circling me and it was just like it was a game for him and the other the two adults were laughing he humiliated me who humiliated I've never been so angry generally I just could not believe it in the end they called him over to give him a treat and I've got him because you know offer him a treat if if another dog walker offers him a treat he'll go for it he loves a treat didn't want anything from me until he was on the lead and we were walking home then yeah where's the treats dad anyway so it was my stepmom I'm just going to call her stepmom because it's step number step num step mum number two, but it's my stepmom. It's my current stepmom. It was her birthday party on Saturday, just gone, two days ago. And I'll be honest, you know I don't like being honest, but I couldn't face the travel. I've been thinking about it all week. I was getting ill with stress thinking about it. Just the whole, because it's probably a good four to five hours of traveling there and back. It's not a long distance. It's just the waiting around for trains, two trains, two journeys to the train station, from the train station, and then back to the train station. And then, you know, then waiting around for the next train. And just, it was... Uh, and then knowing that I had to be on my best behaviour. Because <laughs> I'm five. The five year old. I had to behave. Just. It, it's not knowing what mood I'm going to be in. That's the that's the problem. And. I know that they don't get it. They don't understand. And. I'm not sure even if I understand. To be honest. But I don't want to turn up in a bad mood because then I'm not great company and I don't want to cause problems, you know. So it's, I don't have to be in a good mood. I just have to be in an average okay mood and then I'm fine. But if, <laughs> as sometimes happens, I wake up and I'm in a not particularly good space it's best that I keep away from people so there was that concern and I was yeah I was a bit worried about the whole thing and I was feeling a bit ill to be honest last week not the whole time but at times I was especially come I think Thursday I was so what I did is I think Friday morning I cancelled it. I told them that I wasn't going to be going. 
And I explain why. I, st I said it's just how I'm feeling. That's just the way it is. It's like, you know, it's nothing personal. Well, it's personal to me, but it's not personal towards them. And and I, I spoke to my stepmom and she was fine. You know, she obviously she wanted me to go, but she was fine. That, you know, she understood. I tried to explain the situation and she knows she's aware of the bipolar and all that stuff so anyway I cancelled I already had Vinny booked to be looked after I've had it this is this has been planned for about two months that I knew I've known about this so I already had it my neighbour or his mum, you know, the person that had him before, she was already prepared to look after him for the day on Saturday. She had it in her diary. And then I couldn't get hold of her on, I think it was the Wednesday. I was trying to get hold of her on Wednesday and she couldn't get hold of her. So I thought, oh, I better, I better just make sure, just... Because she's got stuff going on, so I want to make sure that she hadn't forgotten or something hadn't happened. So I asked one of my neighbours downstairs if they could not look after him, but just check up on him, make sure he's okay. Uh, and she said, yeah, we'll take him for a walk and look, you know, be nice. So I said, okay, thank you. I said, but you're just, but this is like uh, only if the other person can't. It, as a, it was more like a backup because I wanted to make sure that he wasn't on his own. Well, that was all all decided. That was all fine. And then on, I think, Wednesday evening, the other lady who, who'd already promised to look after him phoned me up because I'd been texting her, I'd been phoning her. She called up and says, What do you want? What is it? See? That was such a good impression because Vinny looked at me. It was almost like, my mum, what's my mum doing here? What do you want? Anyway, she she said, yeah, of course I remember. Uh, and it was all okay. So I said, all right, fine, thanks. And then I cancelled the neighbour downstairs and said, oh, I've got hold of her and that's all good. Thanks anyway. And then Friday... In the morning, I was not feeling very well. I didn't really get much sleep on Thursday night. And it was just like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, what do I do? What do I do? I can't leave it till Saturday. I got. What do I do? What do I do? Um, but I was still determined to go. And then what? I, then Friday, I woke up, still determined to go on Saturday. But Friday, I didn't have a good night. Thursday night, Friday, I woke up and I thought, no, I can't do it. Just can't, can't face it. It's uh, you know putting on a a pretend happy face if I'm not there, if I'm not feeling that way. And I didn't, because sometimes, there, there's been times when I've not been in, I've forced myself to do stuff even when I'm not in the best mood or perhaps in a very bad mood, let's say. And I've lost friends or I've upset people. It's, it's just, you know, it, I don't want to do that. I kind of rather would avoid that situation. Um, yeah, so I decided, no, let, let them all enjoy themselves, I'll just, I'll see them another time, but, but it was bugging me because, first of all, I promised I was going to go, and I phoned up, and I phoned them up Friday morning and said, uh, I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't do it can't come I don't know if I phoned or I texted I can't actually remember 
I think I phoned actually. I don't rem I don't remember to be honest with you. And then she was fine. She was like, okay. And sent me a really nice message back or whatever happened. I can't, I don't know if I, I don't know, did I speak to her? I don't know. So I said, you know, like it's not, not personal thing. I wanted to come, but just I'm not up to it. And since with all the stuff that's happened since November and, you know, I'm still a little bit raw on that. She said, well, you need to make sure you wear protection in the future. I said, no, not that thing. I'm talking about my friend. She said, yeah, it was your friend, all right. I said, no, no, the other friend. She said, oh, okay, sorry. Blimey. And she says, uh, she was really nice about it. And I, and I felt so much relief. So much relief on Friday after. But not as much relief as I thought I would. Because I also felt guilty. Also felt like, oh, I've let them down. And I keep hearing my little brother's voice. We don't know how long we've got with with them, do we? We don't know, you know. It's like, your dad's nearly 80 now. You don't, you can't keep leaving it. You, you can't, you need to make more effort. And I was like, oh. So, it wasn't as relaxing as I thought it was going to be before I, I mean, it was a lot, of, yeah, it, it was very stress relieving, but not, not in a way that I was hoping. So it's still playing on my mind, um, and so I cancelled Vinny being looked after, didn't need it because I was going to be here. And the person said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. And she said, well, if you change your mind, just come and get me. Just come and let me know. I said, okay, thanks. I won't change my mind. And then I contacted the other. Yeah, I'd already contacted her, I think. So, <clears throat> croaky voice. I went to bed Friday. Went to bed early like I always do on a Friday. Was in bed by about 10 o'clock, I think. Maybe even 9. I didn't, I felt quite uneasy. Didn't, didn't, yeah, I wasn't feeling it, if you know what I mean. I was feeling a bit, mm, just, uh, whatever uh is. And I woke up early. Maybe five o'clock or something on Saturday, maybe four four o'clock maybe, I don't know. And just did what I normally do. Uh, I'd already uploaded the Q and A Friday on on Friday itself, so I didn't have to do any editing first thing in the morning. And I started to, to think. So I was sitting here, I don't know, watching the news or watching some YouTube videos or something, and I was just thinking, hmm, if only there was a way of getting there without all of the hassle of trains and crowds of people and, um, I think there's there would have been a bus replacement service as well for part of the journey because I'm on the like London to Norwich route and quite often at the weekends the uh, they do like rail works they they cut you know I suppose repairing the track and maintenance and stuff so the idea of that just oh. It wasn't wasn't filling me with marshmallows and cream, if you know what I mean. I wasn't getting it too excited about that. Just the idea of it, even though I'd cancelled it, but I still like thought, oh, I wonder, is there a way around it? 
And then I f- then I remembered, and I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe I can get a taxi. And I thought, nah, it's going to cost. It's no way I can afford to get a taxi. I don't have enough money to get a taxi. And I f- then I thought, well, who can I ask? Who, who can I ask to give me a lift? And the one person I could have asked was Vinny's mum, but she's just sold her car. So she's not available. But she would have done. We actually talked about it last week. Uh, I didn't even think about asking her, because just, I don't know, it seems a bit rude to ask someone for stuff like that. And then I thought of someone else, and I thought, no, no. There's no one, there was no one to ask, no one I could ask that has a car that would be willing to do it. Thinking about now, I just got one person that might have done it for me. Just sort of just thought about one person, down. Ne- never mind. Anyway, I think it was eight o'clock in the morning. I thought, you know what, let's find out how much it's going to cost to get to my dad's house from my doorstep to his doorstep. Well, not the doorstep itself, because he's got a driveway, but and there's a pavement. But, but, but you know what I mean, like from where I live to where he lives. And I phoned up the, the taxi company and they gave me a price and I thought well I looked at my bank account and I had there was enough in there for a two way journey so I thought okay let's order it and they didn't need paying beforehand just like just turned up it gave me a set price. I left a tip, but you know, it was a set price that they gave me, which is good. And it was, it wasn't affordable, but it was affordable, you know, in the sense of it's once or twice a year. Actually, it is affordable. Once or twice a month, no way. <laughs> Not even once a month. Not even every two months, but once every six months, yeah, it's it's a possibility I could do that. Uh, and I, I, I really, my mind started thinking differently. Because I started thinking, well, you know what, um, for the last, the la- last time I saw the family, when I say the family, I mean, uh, well, my family, you know, the, the people that I've seen. We know what family is, JJ. No, well, <laughs> come on, don't be rude. Um, the, the group of people that I've been seeing since I was, like, late teens, there's a certain group of people. I mean, some of them are not here anymore, like my nan, um... My stepmom's parents are not here anymore, and I used to I used to get on really well with them. I've really gotten really well with with my step grandmother, my step nan, gone really well. Um, didn't really have much of a conversation with my step granddad because he he just didn't really talk much. A bit like my granddad as well. He's, maybe it's just that generation, or I think they just found me. He found me a bit annoying. Which is understandable, because I find myself annoying sometimes. Never, actually. I just, I think I'm a delight. <laughs> I'm delightful. I just, I find, it's just fun being around myself all the time. It's wonderful. Yeah. But he, her, her, my step, I feel like I could talk more about my step mum's mum. So my step-gran, 
I don't want to say nan, step by step gran was, this is my current stepmother's mum. So I've known her, I knew her from the ages, I suppose I was about, I probably didn't meet her, I met my stepmum when I was about 17. So I've known her, well, I'm 54 next weekend, next Monday. So what's that? 17, 27, 37, So over 20 years, 40, I will not go, I will, I will not, I refuse to go past 47. I'm not older than 47. How could I be older than 47? It doesn't make sense. I was 37 years old when I started my degree, my counselling degree, 37. And that was like three years ago. Clearly it wasn't, but it just, like, how? How? I mean, that's, how could it be 17 years ago that I started my degree? When I only finished it last month. But of course I didn't only finish it last month, but it doesn't, it doesn't, okay, it feels like it's been a while. A while. It's been like, it's been, you know, been a little while. It doesn't feel like it's been decades since I started the course. Well, over a decade. One of the bones in my chest is really lumpy. I've got a... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, blimey. I'm about to tell you something really personal about myself. Ah, oh, hell. Why not? I've got a pigeon chest. So, basically, when I was a kid, my chest used to stick out, the middle of my chest. It doesn't now, because I've got <laughs> big boobies, but, and it hasn't done since I was like, since I put weight on and I've got muscles. So, you know, because, I have to say, it didn't, it, it used to stick out, the middle bit, when I was just skinny and a kid but I can still feel it and it's weird because one side is more more bony than the other and the strange thing I've noticed is if you keep pressing on something it starts to hurt <laughs> and then then I start getting worried like oh why is it hurting it's probably because I spent the last three weeks keep pressing on it it's, it's going to start anything's going to start hurting if you keep prodding it going to start throbbing <laughs> if you keep touching something it'll start throbbing that's rude Ooh. I mean 54 so I what was I talking about oh yeah my step grandmother she oh my my other brother my oldest brother he's got um can, is it concave What's it when it goes in? I've kind of got a chest that goes out a little. It, it can't, I mean, honestly, you can't see it now because of my chest. Like my chest chest, like either side of the chest. Uh, because I'm so manly. <laughs> but his, his chest went in. Honestly, it's like a little swimming pool. Uh, I remember when my little brother, my my my, my brother was sunbathing, and my little brother who was about two years old. He filled it with water and he was swimming around in it, paddling around his chest. And oh, the guy went like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" I had to go at my oldest brother like, "What were you doing? Letting him?" Do you know, I didn't know he was doing that. I was asleep. I was sunbathing. I never know when things climb in there. Badger climbed in the other day. I didn't notice. So I got to school. <laughs> None of that happened. What a weird thing to say. So my step grandmother. So I must have probably met her when I was me, 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 me. I 
I might have met her when I was 18, maybe 19, I'm probably about the 19 age, but it was only in my 20s that I really bonded with her, and we used to, I used to see her, when I came down, because I lived in London, uh, the main time I came down really was like maybe once in the summer, perhaps Easter in the summer, and then Christmas, sometimes Christmas, you know, during the actual Christmas period. And because there was no travel, there was no, you know, all the trains and everything were, were shut. So I had to stay over for a couple of days. So I get there usually Christmas Eve in the evening and go back the day after Boxing Day. So I'd be there for Christmas, Boxing Day. Yeah, it's like for two, two full days and then, you know, a bit of an evening and the, the, the morning after. And she would have, they would watch, yeah, they would be there for dinner. They would be there for lunch, Christmas dinner. And so would be um, my nan as well. But what me and, see, my nan wasn't really that bothered about telly. But my grand, my step-gran, she loved all the soaps. So we would sit in a different room. Watching EastEnders, the, you know, the Christmas edition of EastEnders. We probably start off with Emmerdale, uh, then it was Coronation Street, and EastEnders. And we'd be sitting in the other room all evening watching that stuff. Um, and my dad and his wife, and my nan, and maybe my brother or whatever, uh, would all be in there watching, and the grandkids as well when they came along, and my sister and my other brother. So they'd all be watching TV, maybe in the living room or sitting talking outside but me and her would be in the other room watching the soaps because my dad never liked that stuff and it was just, it was something it was almost like a tradition I used to like it and it was it just always got on she was very chatty and some would say I'm pretty chatty as well. I guess I am, uh, you know, with the right person. I'm pre pretty chatty. And we used to just have a laugh. Got on really, really well. And, and I had a good laugh as well, you know. And it's weird she got ill. She She's, she's gone now. But she, yeah, I'm not going to go into that, but she, yeah, uh, went downhill pretty quickly it was horrible to see because I've never seen anyone that I cared about like that get ill that I'd that I'd gone so well with verbally actually that's not totally true I had a friend who got motor neuron he was a comedian and that was uh, the communication there was even worse as you could imagine I'm sure but the with her it was um I was Alzheimer's, so it was such, yeah, she was so lovely, I really, really, really got on well with her, and it was different to my nan, I had, I had, I might have talked about my nan in the past a few times, probably, I, you know, my nan was the closest relative that I've had since I was 16, since my first stepmom left. So my nan kind of, not took me on, but was there for me. But always, always. The door was always open. You know, I mean, I didn't ever took advantage and didn't turn up at night and so my granddad wouldn't really put up with that, but she she's always always welcomed me was always welcome never never turned me away and even if there was one time I remember my nan this is my nan nan now I went round to see her which I did regularly um when I, especially when I lived in that town and my granddad was still alive at this point so this is probably 87 88 maybe 89, maybe 90, I don't know. I went round there and my granddad answered the door because the gate was locked. Usually we just 
go in the back way and like knock on the back door and go in and um, but the gate was locked so I, lo I knocked on the front door or rang the doorbell I don't know and my granddad answered the door and uh, he let me in I never said I'm here to see Nan he knew I was there to see Nan Nanny Newland he knew that but you know I, I, I like to see him as well but he never spoke to me hardly he didn't really say a word he he never turned me away he never but he didn't he wasn't um overly excited to see me ever <laughs> i don't think maybe i was annoying i don't know some people have found me annoying every now and then but my nan didn't or at least she didn't tell me but she did so she Anyway, on this particular occasion, I said, where's, where's Nan? Where's Nanny? And he said, oh, she's in bed. She's ill. I said, oh, okay. I thought my granddad was just going to turn me away. But he didn't. He invited me in. Made me a sandwich, cup of tea. Watched me eat it. Kept looking at the clock. <laughs> <laughs> there was no conversation. It was quite awkward. But he was busy, you know, because he did a lot of... Um, he'd retired. Uh, I think he retired at 60. So he was like getting on to 80 at this point. <clears throat> and... He... Yeah, he just made me... I still remember what he made me. Maybe a cheese and pickle sandwich. I think it was, or cheese sandwich with mustard. It was something like that, and it was lovely. And a cup of tea, and probably a rock cake. And then I left. You know, it was kind of just one of those moments. Because uh, I'd never, ever gone... I'd, I'd gone around before when my name wasn't there. And if he told me where she was, I'd normally go and I'd either wait for her to come back or I would go and find her. So if he said, oh, she's at a church. Uh, I just, oh, right, okay, I'll go and see her there. Or, you know, she might say, he might say, oh, she's around your dad's. So, okay, I'll go around there. So, yeah, it was, it was weird. But the thing about my granddad is he was a good bloke he was a good man he was he was one of these it's silent but deadly and that's a fart isn't it it's not that human um he was quiet but strong very strong physically mentally uh, I don't know how to ex explain it really. He's because he'd been like well, like anyone of his age at that time. Because he was eighty in nineteen ninety one or nineteen ninety. So he he'd been through the Second World War, like everybody at that age had been. I know not everyone had necessarily been at, you know, out to war, but he had because he was a soldier to start with. And he just retired out of the army at age 29 when I think he'd been out for a, not even very long at all, maybe a year. And then he the uh, Second World War started. So he was one of the first people, the first civilians to get caught up because of it his experience so I think that's what they do during wartime they obviously they they call the army up the the, the forces the the RAF and the Navy and all that but then those that are probably what do they call them not part maybe part-time ones I suppose they're next and then after that it's the previous people that have already been trained uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I'm making it up, but I'm just imagining that's the case. 
and he yeah so he he came back from the war I might have talked about it. It's, it's weird I'm talking about this and that isn't really what I was going to talk about during this podcast but he was he was a POW that sounds better than the actual full sentence isn't it uh, he was a POW and he well surely you don't think POW is necessarily a good term but he when he got found at the end of the war he got found because my nan actually was told that he was missing and he was so she thought that he was gone so she was at home in London bringing up a baby because a baby that my grand had never seen before um they're basically a honeymoon baby if you know what I mean they the the war started my granddad went out and he came back on leave and he got married to my nan and nine months to the day I don't know if it was but you know uh, she gave birth to my oldest uncle who's now passed away unfortunately uh, during covid and she he had never seen his baby until he came back from the war in 19 45 probably about two months after the war ended because he was found in one of the camps and he had to be we had to go to hospital and he had to be because he was so under nu- nutrition undernourished or whatever so he had to debrief him I guess but also get him back to strength So my nan lost him. Basically, my nan lost him twice. But they didn't, in them days, they didn't have funerals for people that were missing because cause it wasn't 100%. But she did think, as far as she knew, that was it. She had, she'd lost him. So she'd already grieved for him. Then she found, she finds out at the end of the war that he's still alive. But he couldn't come home because of where he'd been. He'd been one in one of the camps in Germany, um, and he, when he came back, they put a street party on for him. So he was a very liked person, very known. I think he'd lived around there his whole life. I think, been born now. I reckon, like in that area of London, and the, and my nan was very, very likable. You know, she if she would have known everybody. She once worked for Bruce Forsyth, who's a very famous celebrity in this country. He's, he's no longer around, but he was really famous. And she, I think she looked after, he had a, he had a garage or something, and she, like a, a lock-up, something like that, and she used to uh, clean it for him. Yeah, because he was from that area, Bruce, he was. Anyway, or was it a theatre? I don't know. It was something that she used to clean for him. So, anyway, so he was coming home. They put on a little, like a little party in the street to welcome him home. Big banners, welcome home, granddad. And welcome home, Jason's granddad, even though I wasn't been born yet. And he, when he got home, he avoided the street and he went in the back gate, went to the back gate, went upstairs. And I only know this because my nan told me. She told me loads and loads of stuff about her life, my granddad's life, my, my dad's, even my, like, earlier life. So, yeah, I got found out a lot about stuff from her. Um both her parents it's weird but both her grandparents my nan's grandparents on I don't know if it's a mum or I think it was a dad's side I'm not sure but because they're all Irish both my nan's parents were Irish they came here from Ireland we know what being Irish means no they they 
I mean, technically, my name was Irish because if both your parents are Irish, really, Vinny? He's absolutely destroyed that bone. It's completely gone. This has taken a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. That is so loud. I'm hungry as well. Vinny, shush. I hope it's not too loud. It is too loud, isn't it? It's very loud. He's found something to rip open. It's a bag. I thought I took the bag. Wait a minute. What is that you're doing? I don't even know what it is. Well, it's definitely not chocolate. Is it? What is that thing you've got? I've got no idea what it is. Oh yeah, I can see what it is. It's just a wrapper. It's the, the little wrapper bag that his treats came in. And I don't know how he got it because I did not, <laughs> I did not put it on the floor. He somehow managed to get it off at the top and onto the floor. It's so noisy. <sighs> anyway, so... Yeah, my, uh, I should get back to what I was talking about. So my... I decided I ordered the taxi on Saturday. And I ordered it for 10 o'clock. So two hours after I'd phoned... You know, I called them at like just after eight o'clock in the morning, a taxi. And I said, Can I get it for ten o'clock, please? And they said, Okay. And so I took took Vinny O U T three W A L K. Make sure he does a wee wee's and everything. I tried tried to contact my neighbour just to see if she could look after him. After all, even though I had told her that I didn't need her to, she was didn't answer a phone and she didn't answer a door. It was, to be fair, fairly early, and I didn't I didn't knock on a door till half nine, so I didn't want to didn't want to be knocking that too early earlier than that. Well, I did ring about half eight, and no answer. Eventually, she phoned me probably about 12 o'clock but I was already at my dad's so anyway I didn't tell my dad that I was coming I thought well I've already told him I'm not coming so I might as well I'll just get the taxi and see how it goes and just roll up maybe it'd be a nice surprise for them I don't know which it turns out it was which is nice Oh, he's eating, his, he's eating his dinner now. Now he's eating his food. He's just had a nice drink of water. Now he's eating his food. So he's he, everything's gone to plan for him. He's had a, he's just been out for a walk. He's now he's had a treat, a bone to eat, chew on. Now he's now he's got his food, and he's had a bag to rip open. So everything's gone to plan. So uh, yeah, uh, so I, I'm. I'm in the taxi, and this the bloke that was giving me a lift is very chatty. And I said to him, "Is it all right to open the windows?" That when we first got in, I like to have the I like the the feeling of the air blowing in. I know it's not everyone's thing, but I mean, yeah, especially in the winter, maybe it's not so nice. But in the summer, it was breezy and it was nice. 
and I'm not a big fan of air conditioning generally, if I can help it. But he he, he asked me, I said, like, okay, I can close the windows, because it was quite loud. And I said, yeah, okay. It wasn't, didn't really bother me. I was, I was only going to be in the car for 40 minutes. At this point, we were probably 10 minutes in. It turns out, he only, I think he only really reason he wanted to close the windows what he kind of said oh I can hear you now or you can hear me now because he wanted to talk I think and he just told me some quite interesting things he talked about Ramadan and you know what it was like to go that, that long without eating and stuff like that and we just talked about some stuff and it was it was interesting it was quite nice so yeah that that journey went fairly quickly really it was not a lot of traffic it was i think the fact that we were we were traveling away from london meant that it was less traffic than if we were traveling towards london because the journey home that was a different matter because we were traveling towards london and part of the there was roadworks so it took about an hour to get back instead of 35 minutes. Anyway, so we, we get, we're, we're traveling, we get there, he parks, I walk up the driveway and I see my dad in the kitchen. It's like, hey, oh, it's lovely. Just to see the look on his face, he went from being happy to being really sad so quickly. <laughs> to see his face drop, oh no, not him again. <laughs> but no, he seemed he seemed quite pleased to see me. Um. So yeah, it was it was all right. We had a barbecue, and I had some cooked food which I hadn't had for a while, and. Yeah, it was quite nice because some of some of the people there were saying, "Oh, that I'd lost weight." I said, "Yeah, yeah, baby, I have, I have." And after telling the first person, no, telling the second person, I think word got round, and the third person that mentioned I'd lost weight when I went to speak, uh, she said to me, "Ah, oh, you don't have to tell us about the pre-diabetic." And you've cut sugar, and you're not eating sh any cakes or, s or sweets or chocolate. I know all about that. Everybody knows about it now. You don't have to tell the story again. How rude! I love telling that story. So, oh, did you, do you do you want to know what happened? Yeah, because <laughs> let me tell you. No, I'm going to back to a doctor's next month. It's only probably a week or two away. And I got another blood test to check my blood sugar level to see if I've managed to reduce it. I must have done, mustn't I? And if I've lost weight and I've had no sugar except what's in naturally in food, it must have reduced. I hope so. So, yeah, and there we had barbecue i spoke to i had a good chat with my brother's girlfriend so that was nice because we haven't really i felt like we bonded a little bit this time I, I never really felt that she liked me before um but i was just annoying her but this time i mean she did yawn a bit when she was talking to me but that's normal you know i think I don't think I always excite people. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I, I think so. It might just be the way I look. It's like, it's like oh, it makes people yawn. They just don't want to look at me. Or maybe, maybe my voice is a bit tedious. I'm not sure what it is. But we got on. Yeah, we got on really well, which is nice. Um, my little brother was busy trying to because he got. He got my stepmom a new phone, so he was transferring, syncing up the old phone with the new phone, and 
that was causing him problems. So he was getting a bit frustrated with that. So he didn't. We were talking. It was. I think it was annoying him a bit because we kept talking to him, and he wanted to focus on that. And he spent about three hours doing it. Seriously, I couldn't believe it. And so who else do I see? I see me, my sister and my other brother. So that was good. Their kids. So there was one little girl, and then there was the twins. And then her other older daughter, which I haven't seen since, blimey, last time I saw her, last time I saw any of them, apart from my dad and my stepmom, last time I saw any of them was five years ago. It was 2019. And it was uh, my stepmom's birthday party again. Except that was... It was her 60th, so it was a party party, you know, the whole garden was all decorated, and so, the Vinny just started barking there, so I'll try to edit that out. Last time, yeah, it was 19, 2019, um, literally just before all the old, you know, 2000 and 2021 stuff happened. Well, 2022 in some places as well. So there was two years when I couldn't really go. I did go in 2022, but I did. I, I went to the town and I visited my dad at his place. And then but that was the last time I'd visited them. But I didn't see anybody else on that visit. So this is the first time in five years that I'd seen my brothers, sisters, grandkids. Well, not my grandkids, but my ne nephews and nieces and stuff. Um, yeah, or my brother's girlfriend. It's weird. It's like it doesn't seem like five years. That's that's half of that's half of ten years. Half of a decade. I mean, you think five years, 10 of those, well, 11 nearly, but, you know, just over 10 of those, and that's my entire life so far, plus four, or three and 51 weeks. So there was no, this time, because last time uh, in 19, can you say 19, 2019, there was loads of people that I didn't know, like their friends and there was a few people I did know from the past or they recognised me and I like I think my dad's apprentice is apprentice from like late seventies or early eighties. Lovely, lovely lad. I say lovely lad. I mean in reality he wasn't much older than me. He was probably I don't know, six years older than me. So, which was a hell of a lot then. But now, not so much. You know, it mean yeah, six years is, isn't a lot really. And I saw him, it was like so weird. He's still got the same face. He's still, he's got a young face. He's one of these people that just really nice. I, I must be getting old. Everyone's nice now. I don't want to talk about horrible things. I would like, oh, they're horrible. I just, I'd rather talk about how nice, the, the nice characteristics of people. Don't know why. But yeah, he's always, he's always a nice bloke. Always friendly. Because, you know, he was, cause he was my dad's apprentice. Because my dad was an electrician. He'd be around the house every day. During my childhood. During, I don't know how many years. Yeah, a good like five, six years or something. So I would see him regularly. Every morning he'd be around there to collect, or maybe it was for three or four years. I don't know how long. So he was an apprentice and then he went and got his own business, but he might have still worked with my dad, so we'd still see him. But he was there every morning. He was there, see him at weekends, and he, he became part of the family, really. 
him and his girlfriend or his wife and they'd you know if there was a family get together he'd be invited because he was he was kind of like another son in a sense to my dad I guess because he was only a little bit older than my oldest brother so I saw him there was a couple of women they're friends of my stepmom and Uh, they asked me who I was and I said I'm JJ did you see JJ did you Jason he said who I said her son he's just my mum to talk to her about my stepmom and they laughed and my stepmom looked at him and said oi it's my son and they shut up it was not really nice it was quite nice because obviously she's not my birth mother and she's way too young really I mean she's I think she's she's not way too young I mean she is but you think she's 65 I'm 54 so it's 11 years so, okay she is way too young I'm, I'm so obviously she is but you know another in this country another five years and she there's plenty of people get pregnant at 16 in this country that is the legal age for that stuff. But even eight, so eight, 18 is still, it's only six years away or seven years from 11. So it's not, not a huge, huge gap. Does that make sense? It's not like she, I was, if she was two when I was born, then yeah, obviously it's like, ugh. yeah. Plus I look so damn young. I just, I mean, back then, I, I couldn't have looked more than about 25, five years ago, in my mind. And then I got some new glasses, and it all changed. So, yeah, uh, that was that was it. So, that was that party. Uh, it was nice. It was nice to see the people again that I haven't seen for quite a while. But it was also strange that some things just haven't changed. Not strange in a bad way, just quite comforting, I guess. Uh, there's a few different changes to the house, but ultimately it's, you know, it's the same garden, it's the same driveway, it's... My little brother looks the same. My other brother looks the same. Sister looks the same, even though it's been five years. Maybe they look a bit older. I don't really notice it, to be honest. And is my brother's girlfriend looks the same. The only people that look different are the kids. Because the oldest is about to go to college. So last time I saw her, she was probably about 12 or 13. Maybe. So yeah, she definitely looks different. And the other, the littler kids were babies pretty much last time I saw them. Toddlers. And now they're like six or seven. It's just weird. It's just strange. They didn't know, they didn't know who I was. The oldest one remembered me because she used to see me quite regularly as she was growing up. Um, you know, quite a few times a year she'd see me and spend Christmas and stuff. So she she kind of knew who I was, even though I hadn't seen her for five years. But it was almost like I expected just everyone to forget me, which is weird, probably a weird thing to do. But they've known me a long time now because... Both the younger ones, the, they're my stepbrother and stepsister, but they're our oh, brother and sister. Since they were probably seven or eight years old, and I was, what, 20? So it's a fair difference in age. Maybe I wasn't, maybe I was 18, 19. I think the stepbrother is the same age as my, he's one year younger then my little brother and my sisters I think one year younger than him so they're all kind of roughly the same age they're all in the 40s anyway 
So my little brother is 46 next week. <laughs> Can't wait till he's 50. Until I remember that I'll be 58. So it's not so good. But forgetting that part. I can't wait to see his face when he's 50. Then I just keep remembering I'm eight years older. It's just, I wish I could just get that out of my head. I want to see his face when he's 60. But I'll be 68. It's just not. Oh. I'll always be eight years older. And don't he let me know it. Oh. What did he say? He said something to me at lunch. He said something. It was really rude. It was funny, but it was rude. Well, not lunch. What we was eating. Uh, it was lunch. It was lunchtime. Um, I think there was asking. I think my sister was asking me about this stuff I do. And I said, yeah. Are you still doing it? I think they, she asked. I said, yeah. Be doing it forever. Be doing it forever. I will be. And she said, well, you know, for the rest of my life I'll be doing this. And um, I don't know what we were talking about. Probably just about why am I, or am I making any money? No. Why am I doing it if I'm not making any money? the same old conversation I've had multiple times over the last 17 or 18 years it's not about making money it's about helping people and uh, it's just going, it's going quite well I don't know he made something about I imagine if you put that much energy into I don't know, something about being a millionaire. But it was funny, but I can't remember exactly. I'll try and remember what he said. In fact, I might text him to ask him. Just so I can tell you next time. But. It's basically, why aren't you a millionaire then? Something like that. And I said, well, same same to you, really. But I was about 10 minutes too late. It was a very slow reaction. It was funny, so I was laughing, but... Uh, Oh, there's one bit when he he was going to the shed to get wine or something for people that were at the table. Like, I don't know why he was getting it. So I don't drink, so I was just had my bottle of water. Because I'm a hero. And as he walked away, and he was on his way, I said to... I, I said something so old to his girlfriend. Um, I don't know if I've, I've... I hope I haven't ruined this. But he's going to propose you, to you in a minute. He said He said to us that whenever... When he comes back with a glass of wine... That we have to get our cameras out and film it. And they... They all laughed. So it was my brother, sister and his girlfriend... And then he came, he came back holding this glass of wine. <laughs> so I get my phone out. And he's just oblivious to what, what's been said. It was just a funny, weird, funny moment. It's just... Because the idea that... She might have believed me as well. She didn't believe me, but she knew I was just being silly. But the fact that I'd like... First, I could have spoilt the surprise if it was real. But on the other end, made her think that she was about to get proposed to when she wasn't. And my brother being oblivious to all of the, the whole conversation. So him coming back and maybe her expecting him to propose to her. <laughs> oh, it, it, was, it was silly. It was a silly moment. But I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. I did enjoy it, yeah. It was... It, I don't know if I really explained it in a way that other people could enjoy that moment as well. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm going to have a pizza tonight. I am. I am, I am, I am. 
So I'll just check, just let you know if you're still listening. My website, oh, I've been working on my website the last few days. Well, yeah, last couple of days and stuff. It's very updated. There's a lot of, uh, a lot more stuff on there that you can download for free. It's coming along quite nicely actually now. That was my stomach. Did you hear that? Like a drain emptying. So yeah, so I just we was there, had a lovely had to had some food. Had a laugh. I kept sheltered from the sun because sun doesn't really suit me. And I got there about eleven o'clock. I ordered a taxi for three o'clock. So so what's eleven, twelve, one, two, three. So I was there for four hours. I know that's not a long time and I in retrospective or whatever I would have ordered it rectum inspective inspective I, I would have probably ordered it for five really four maybe five but I was more concerned about this little one I didn't want to leave him too long on his own I thought six hours was enough and I still I still believe that was enough time to leave him on his own I didn't I didn't want him on his own for the whole day, you know, moving into the evening, it's dark outside and just, yeah. I don't remember if I turned, I don't think I did turn in lights on because I knew I was going to be back. But I did put food out and water and, you know, I left the TV on with some music, a specific YouTube video for relaxing dogs. Which is ironic because the one I found, I started playing it, and there's a picture, a static picture of a dog, which might surprise you. It did the opposite to relaxing him. He started howling at it. <laughs> so I had to find one that didn't have a picture of a dog on. Are they not aware that? If you imagine, I've got a big TV, so him, considering how little he is. The dog on TV screen is probably the biggest dog he's ever seen in his life. It's like a lion. So I found one in the end that had a black screen and it was just music. Uh, I don't remember when I got back. I don't remember if the TV was still on or not. It might have just switched itself off. But it didn't make a sound when I came in. It didn't bark. But he was at the door when I opened the door. And he was all excited to see me and he was kissing me and, you know. And for, I took him out for a walk and everything. Oh, I said that word. He wouldn't leave me alone. He stuck to me like glue, seriously. Not like glue, it wasn't. But he, he did stay close to me. I guess he didn't want, you know, in case I went out again or anything. So he's been a bit like that the last couple of days. Yeah. It's nice, but I think he's getting a bit bored with me again. But for at least a day, like all all through Sunday, or Saturday night and Sunday, he was really like... The thing is, on Friday, he did something he doesn't normally do. So I went to bed quite early. I woke up, went to the toilet, and I usually have the door closed. But on this occasion, well, I have to I have to open it to get through because I'm not slim enough to get through the gap. So and I don't want to climb through the window, and it's just a hassle. So I open the door and go that way because it's quicker. So I go to the bathroom, do a wee wee, and come back, close the door, go to bed. Well, the second time I did that, I so I think I did a few wees that night for some reason, probably maybe nerves, you know, who knows, uh, still kind of unsure, well, he decided to go yeah, into the living room, and he went to sleep on the settee, which he hasn't done for ages, so maybe I was being a bit restless, so yeah, I don't know if he, in his mind, somehow 
the fact that he slept away from me and then I went out. Maybe he thought I was punishing him for that or... I know, I'm sure dogs don't think that way, but that's possibly how I would think. So he's stuck close to me. Bless him. He's been pretty good. He's done a little bit of barking, but he's not been terrible, to be honest. I mean, look, he's barked once, I think, during this recording. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, I ordered the, ordered the taxi for three. We had a few photographs all took and everything before three o'clock. And, you know, I had a chat with everybody. Uh, individually, one, two, three, four, five. My stomach's churning. Yeah, I spoke to about five. I spoke to all the adults individually. Um, none of the kids really wanted to talk to me. And, yeah, it was. I tried to talk to my niece, who's, I don't know, 17, 18, or whatever she is now. I was getting one word answers and my dad laughed. He said, yeah, that's what you get now. I mean, maybe she's 16, I don't know, 17, 16 or 17, but she's not. It's weird though, because you know, if you heard her on the phone, it'd be full sentences, like nonstop, lots and lots and lots and lots of words, probably very quick words, but you know, when it came to talking to anyone else, like in the family, like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, no, yep, yeah, no, yep. Yeah. She didn't get out of bed till, like, I think half past 12 in the afternoon. Wow. I would never get away with that. Seriously, if I, any time I stayed over my dad's, I wouldn't get away with staying in bed till half 12. He'd start drilling the door. He'd take the door off. Start, you know... I don't know <laughs> replacing the windows in the bedroom whatever just to get me out of bed well, I was wet there once I think it was cleaning the windows outside it's like really why you do this on a Sunday morning they're my windows I'll clean them when I want to yeah but it's two o'clock in the morning <sighs> light shining in my face so yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice. It was really good, and it made me realise not not in a kind of judging way, but the whole aging thing. I'm not the only one that's getting older. You know, we're all getting older, and like the family wise, and. I guess because I hadn't been there for a while, it was noticeable. It wasn't so noticeable last time because there were so many other people there. But it was very noticeable that my nan and the... My step-nan and my step-granddad weren't there. It was... That was quite a noticeable thing. And... I don't know, even though they've not been there for quite a while, it just, I don't know, it just was noticeable. I, I found a little bit. It was a bit strange. And then seeing oh, my dad's, I don't want to use the word old, but old, uh, he's old, uh, he's older now, as I am. And just seeing how how quickly the kids grow up and I've not been part of their lives at all not really they don't know who I am and no one's fault I mean the the, the two the twins they don't li live anywhere near me at all they don't live they live quite a quite a distance away and um, yeah it's probably wow a couple of hours on a train I think probably so, it's or maybe an hour, hour and a half on the train. I don't know. Yeah. 
the only person that wasn't there was my brother's wife, my other, my stepbrother's wife. So she was definitely missed because she's lovely, and I haven't seen her again for five years. And yeah, so that was. But she was working, so she couldn't get there. Yeah, it's weird though to see the twins, how different they are. I mean, they're boy and girl, so they're clearly different physically, but personality wise, nothing in common. Just from what I saw, I mean, I had very brief, I saw them briefly, I didn't really see what they were like, you know, all the time, obviously, but also from what my sister says, like, very, very different. One's really quiet and one's really not. Like, it's really, not loud, but very, very energetic. And so that's the boy. And the little girl, she's just really quiet. You know, it's, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see what they're like as they get older see it's just weird because I'm always the stranger even if it's even if I see them once a year I'm still the stranger like I see my little brother once a year if I even if I, if I do see him once a year like kind of no, normally like I used to or twice sometimes but even if it's just once a year it's that's yeah, fine but when 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 a kid's young a year's a long time, isn't it? Vinny, what are you doing? Stop licking my phone. He's just, he doesn't know what to do. He wants to, he wants to climb on me, don't you? Do you want to climb on me? Climb on me if you want. And cuddles. You want cuddle waddles? Cuddle waddles. I'm hungry now, so I'm going to go. But yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I got a taxi ordered for three, three o'clock. I uh, got a phone call at three o'clock. It was there. And I went out. I was actually, no, I was, my dad told me they were here. I didn't get a phone call. Did I, my dad told me they were here. And I was going to the toilet because I was getting ready to go outside and wait for them. And then I go outside and I can't see the car and it's parked about three doors down or two doors down. So I'm waving to them. And my dad's there, my brother's there and they were sort of seeing me off. I've all, I've all said goodbye to everyone as well. And the bloke's just, looks like he's, well, for me it looked like he was looking at me. But he wasn't acknowledging me. So I said, oh, I'll just go over and just get in his car, walk up to him if he can't drive to me but he wasn't looking at me, he was on his phone and I think he was just looking to try and find uh, to call me, to let me know Cause he, he actually thought he was outside the right house but he was just a couple of, couple of doors off so he was fit, pretty much outside the right house and he was also lovely as well so we had a good chat on the way home but we got stuck in traffic proper stuck so it was a much longer journey but it was all right it all went okay to plan and it got home i said i got home about six o'clock no it's six o'clock i got home about four i might be an after four but it was around four o'clock i think in fact i can tell you exactly what time it was because I got a text, I got a phone call just before I got home from a neighbour. Let's have a look. Saturday. Yeah. 3.59 she phoned me. So all calls. Saturday. 3.59. And... I contacted, yeah, at five o'clock, I sent a text message 
to my family. I had to my dad to let him know that I was back safely. Clay asked me to, so I did that. And I was like, okay. So yeah, it was probably just after four o'clock, maybe five or ten past four. So it was, it was a lot longer than the other journey. But, you know, what can you do? Traffic jams, are, well, traffic, I guess it was a traffic jam, but it was it was on a motorway due to roadworks. But it's all right. We are stuck on a roundabout for a while, weren't we? So I had to stop myself from saying, don't worry, I'll walk the rest of the way and you just go back. It's going to be quicker for you to get back. I'll just walk. But then I'll be walking for half an hour. And that kind of defeats the object of getting a taxi and paying for the taxi if I'm going to walk, you know, for half an hour. And I was a little bit exhausted by that time as well. So the day took a fair bit out of me. So, yeah. The thing is, come Saturday, I was a little bit too wired to... I did my normal thing, you know, uh, went to bed about nine or ten but I was I just wasn't really I was a little bit too activated I guess from all the days going ons yeah but yesterday was fairly relaxing and today I don't know I've done quite a bit of uh, website building and stuff like that and I've uh I've made this recording, of course, and I let it in in the morning. So I'm gonna keep, cook myself a pizza because my neighbour, one of my neighbours, gave me a pizza because I said to her, oh, "I'd really do a pizza." And she said, "Oh," and then she came back and said, "Oh, I've got a pizza you can have from the freezer." So it's a, a triple triple cheese or triple cheese one. So I'm 17 minutes in the oven, so that'll be good. And yeah, that's me done, and then I'll have that. And then I'll take this one out. It'll be the last thing of the day. And then it'll be the time to go to bed. So I'll be in bed by 10 probably. Yes, I will. Yes, I will, won't I? Right, so that's it for me. So that was the party. I probably haven't really talked gone into much detail really have I but that was my second stepmom's my stepmom let's call my stepmom now that was her party birthday party so yeah I, for her birthday I actually got her a massive bar of chocolate I sent it I, already, I sent it in the post uh, because her birthday wasn't it was actually at the beginning of the week so I sent it last Friday to get to her on Monday I don't know if it was Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Saturday, Friday or Saturday. So Vinny is now starting to bark, so calm down. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.